So you're going to get some 3D, or not 3D, 360 degree. You can do this in 3D if you have the 3D glasses for your phones. Someone's calling me. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I'm using my my loader, obviously, uh, an 8120. When I bought this loader, I had super high expectations for it, and I, I like it. Don't get me wrong, I like it. I think a lot of the problems with this loader isn't so much the loader as much as it is the, uh, as much as it is the tractor. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the tractor, it's just really a tractor that's not designed to do what we're doing with it. It's reverse, it's a power shift, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with power shift. It works good, but I'm used to the left hand reverser on this thing, and the left hand reverser uh, is tits when it comes to running a loader tractor. Alright, so every, and the other thing that I don't like about it is the fact that the, uh, when you go from reverse to forward, it puts you in third reverse automatically, and third, there's five reverse gears in a power shift on the 8120. Um, the forward gear will stay right where you had it, which is fine. You know, that's fine. So those are some of the issues that I have with the tractor itself. It just takes some time to get used to it. Now, this bale here was a bale that was in the baler for a while before he started baling. So it's what you call an ugly bale. And uh, you can see what I'm talking about because you've got 360 view. Um, but anyway, the loader, it's slower than I thought it should be. You know, I mean, the cycle times are slower. Uh, is it terrible? No. Uh, is there an issue with the, there's an issue with the hydraulics. I actually have to engage uh, one of the remotes in order to get this thing to signal the valve to engage my loader operation. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying. I had ta talked to the company and never got a response back. So I'm a little bit annoyed there. Not the worst. Maybe they overlooked or forgot my complaint. So I've been busy, haven't had time to talk to them. Uh, but for the most part, I do like the loader. It's heavy. It works well. Um, the set of spears that came with the uh, loader that I bought with the loader. The uh, what do they call that thing? The, well, anyways, the ones I, I disengaged the tilting option for it tilt out uh, because of the rack that I made to hold that thing on. It became very tall and when it's tall like that it wants to drop away instead of instead of actually uh, just pull the things directly out and I broke a few bales with it. You know you're going across a field and the spikes are flopping around up and down like that and, uh, you know, when you're hauling as many bales as I am, you're putting too many bales on the loader. <laughs> like two of these, two of these four by fours and three of the three by fours. And it's really, there's a lot of leverage out there, you know. And, you know, it's, it's okay. It works. It does its job. I'm happy with that. Well, it does its job. I'm happy with it. But I disengaged it. All I did was made a couple of clamps and clamped it so that it won't flop up and down. Works just as good. Actually, it works a lot better. So, anyway, with that being said, the that rack that I built for this to keep the bales from falling back onto the hood of the tractor, uh, I added two 18 inches or 20 inches of room so I could reach across the load, uh, the wagon, to get the other side because the load, the track, the loader's long enough, but the tractor is extremely long. And the mounting to the, the 
mounting to the tractor is back really far, so there's not much room between the front of the tractor and uh, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, don't break. Uh, see, now that was a thing. See, this bale was baled light. Mr. Tim had problems with his baling. And that's the first mistake that people will do when they run a big square baler. When you're having problems with a big square baler, the best thing to do is to stop what you're doing, figure out the issue, and fix it. But no, no. The first thing people want to do when there's a problem with the baler is loosen the, ten the density up. Loosen it up. It's too tight, causing daughter troubles. It's not, it's not always the case, and actually 99% of the time, that is far from the problem. It's usually something like a, a spring keeper, and the cam follower the spring is weak, or you've got the wrong bailing twine in your baler, and that's what was wrong with this. Knife arms were weak, and, or worn, and the bailing twine that I had in the baler was too thick for the baler. So that's those are the problems that you'll have with these things. But the loader's good. I mean, probably should have spent the extra money on the deer loader because it would have matched up perfectly. It would have been a little longer. I wouldn't have had problems with the hood. It would have been a little wider. But, you know, all in all, it was definitely worth the money that I paid for it. You know, I did pay about, I don't know, $10,000 less for this. Ooh, come on, bitch, don't you dare. And I've got these Bergman speed hitches, which are awesome, by the way. I don't know if you can see that or not, but oh, come on, Wesley. Feeling a little... You know, I've been loading and unloading all day, and... had trouble. But that's it. I'm hooked and ready to go. Now my wagon's out there and like I said I had to engage the selective control valve or SCV or hydraulic outlet as most 90% of people call them. Just click it off when you're going to hit the road. I need to wash my windows. I'm sorry. They're dirty but that's just the way it is. And now I'm off to get another load. So, uh, yeah. That being said, uh, life is good. Uh, the tractor does exactly what it's supposed to. It's easy to take this loader off, a lot easier than what the John Deere was. It's also, you know, it's still, it's, it, it can be used for anything other than just a loader tractor. Uh, Dad did drop a bunch of bales. Well, we're gonna get some road travel. Uh, I got to the field. I forgot to turn the camera on. So it's just I got into a couple of different a couple of different fields with a lot of ditches and stuff, but you got some road travel. Uh, these bales have been sitting in the field now for about three weeks, I would say. And they're they're damp. They're not they're not rotten in any way, they're just damp on top. We've had probably two and a half inches, three inches of rain on them. Uh, I'm gonna get them stacked out. About a couple, well, just a couple of days, just to have some drier enough weather, and then we're gonna stack them up and tarp them. This guy passes me and then gets hurt like that, puts his turns in. You know, if you're, if you're out there and you're a non farmer and you pass a tractor and then make a turn, like whether it's a left turn, it's usually the worst turn, don't fucking do that. You know, I'm pulling something that's probably. 15 tons behind me, easily 15 tons behind me. I can't stop that easy. Come on, man. Now, anyway, I guess I'll meet you back at the hay pile where I'm going to set this stuff out like I did before. And I'll talk about something there, too. Okay, I'm back at, a, back at a hay pile. Oh, and uh, I'm just going to set these bales out. We will be stacking them up. Uh, possibly stacking them up. We are moving about, well this week we're going to move 10, 12 loads of hay out this week. So far I've got four, six out. Six out. So I'm halfway there for the week. Oh, 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 oh. Don't do it. Don't you do it, you dirty dog. The 
thing with these uh, these Bergman hitches is that they will you, you can get them on a hill and they'll take off on you. They will just take off on you and you'll be like, what the heck is going on here now? <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, so I'm just going to put these things here. They're going to dry, they're either going to dry out or, and, or they're going to be sold by the end of the, well, these will be gone by the end of the week. I'm yammering now. And it's fine because, you know what? Okay to be the end of the week. Where are we going? They're not that wet. I thought they would be wet. This one here is a care package. This one here only has two strings on it. So what we do with the two stringers is we put them up here, out of the way, and that's what they are. They're a care package. So we set them up here. You can see, if you look around with the 360 view, you'll see like three, or three bales there. This stuff will all make it to the, to the composters. It absolutely will make it. Uh, even the ones that are broken completely, what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn those slices of hay sideways and stack them up on top of a bale and then put a strap over top of them so that they make it to the mushroom bar or the composter and we're good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set these down on this side. I've got, I don't have too many of these left. I do have definitely do have a, uh, yeah, I definitely do have a few loads that have to be uh, gathered up here in the next uh, couple of days. Timothy's stacking up in Clinton right now. He's running, that was hay that was bailed, I don't know, three days ago, on Friday. That was hay that was bailed on Friday because we had rain on Thursday, Thursday. Me and him went up there on Thursday. I don't know that I even filmed anything on that. I've been so busy, I'm, I'm slacking in the filming department. But I think you guys will enjoy this video just because it is a uh, it is a 360 video. If you wanted to do 3D and then spin it around in your, you know, you can do that too. Which is cool. I think it's cool as hell. And this camera is a Rilo. If you if you didn't catch that the first time, or if you decide that you wanted to, uh, you know, maybe have one of these cameras, it's about five hundred dollars. Uh, I bought the extra battery and an extra waterproof case, which is good to fifty feet. And I thought it was good to uh, three hundred feet, like a GoPro case, but it's not. It's good to fifty feet. Now. <laughs> Put it this way. I'm not a scuba diver and I'm not a free diver. So I think 50 feet is probably more than enough <laughs> uh, for what I'm doing with this camera. But uh, yeah, <coughs> I, really, I really enjoy it. I think it makes pretty good quality content. Uh, but this is really a normal day for me. Uh, we're, you know, we're moving a lot of hay around. We got two loaders running in a stack wagon, so as you can imagine, we're really knocking it out pretty quickly. I'd like to actually get another one of these wagons, um, at least the gear. But the gear is like six thousand dollars for that gear, and it needs to be heavy gear like that. So, I don't know. Ooh, there goes my iPad. Why did you do that? Why did I end up in fifth gear? Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about Google or YouTube right now a little bit. So, as you know from my videos, and if you watch the Stony Ridge Farmer, uh, he just received his silver play button. Now, he got his silver play button, or he qualified for his silver play button the very day that he was at my place here. Uh, I think it was this day, it might have been the next day, but I think it was the after that afternoon that he had reached his 100,000 subscriber mark, which is awesome. I'm so happy for him because, you know what, I'm just happy for anybody that reaches this milestone, this accomplishment. Millennial Farmer did it, um, God, who was the other one? I, 
he just recently did it, and I believe they blew, he has blown past me. I think he's at 140,000 subscribers. And, you know, he makes good videos. He's got good quality content. He spends a lot of time doing them, I think. Actually, I don't think he does. Honestly, I think he's the, he just sees something, says something, records it, stops it, and then edits it. But he's not putting a video out every day, so maybe he is taking a little more time. He's definitely taking more time than what I do. I mean, I'm pretty quick and dirty. And I try to get a video out there every day for my subscribers because, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I, I like doing this, you know? And I was just talking to somebody. I can't remember what their name was. They called me on the phone. Uh, you know, a subscriber, and I do answer subscriber calls. Please don't inundate me with phone calls every 10 minutes. But they're like, so, uh, you know, is not is this YouTube thing a job or what now? I was like, well, technically, it's not, it's not a job. I don't take YouTube as a job. And uh, I get paid to do it. I look at it as though it is just another chore on the farm. Like being a dairy farmer. Uh, we did it the old fashioned way. We bred our cows, we raised our calves, we we always had our livestock going into the barn to be milked. Uh, and we had to feed those calves and raise them and do what we had to do, cull them out at times and you know, it was just another job to do. So and it wasn't those jobs were, to me, were not that enjoyable. I really didn't care for the calves uh, because I had to do them when I was a kid, you know, little, young. I mean, a seven, eight years old, I was feeding calves, uh, you know. So that really wasn't my favorite job on the farm to do. So big deal, you know, whatever. Uh, but YouTube is like fueling up my tractor. You know, that's really what YouTube is to me. It's fueling up my tractor. I go one of the tractors. Uh, the only difference is it's not costing me money. It's actually making me money, some money. So I take that as a job that I don't dislike at all. I don't mind fueling up the tractor. I don't like paying the fuel bill. But uh, it's a job that I don't dislike. But it's a job that I do in order to get on with my day. And that is the way I, I view YouTube. It's just a job that I do that is at the beginning of my day. It's like fueling up my tractor. So I've already said that I'll do YouTube until I can't stand, until it becomes a chore or a job that I don't like anymore. Well, this is my 10th year and I always had this, this idea that, you know what, I only had one year to do this and then I would have shown everybody everything that I don't, could do on a farm and on this particular farm and then that's it. I'll just end my channel and that'll be the end of it, right? I mean, that's what I've said for many years, a long time. Uh, that's what it was, but I'm still finding content. I'm still trying to improve my channel. I still enjoy every single day uh, getting up and doing this thing they call YouTube. Now, YouTube, YouTube doesn't like me. I am not the person that YouTube wants to have on their phone. And I'm a little saddened by that. And let me explain why I feel this way. Because I I passed, oh Christ, I don't even know what month it was. I surpassed 100,000 views. It might have been in April or May. I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me. You know, it was one of those months, April or May. This thing is going to try and break that bail. So let's do that. So April or May is when I surpassed the 100,000 subscriber mark. Yay, right? Who knows to me? Um, the way it's supposed to work, and I talked to Ryan from How Farms Work, but the way it's supposed to work is uh, Gobble My Balls was supposed to send me a, uh, a code that, uh, to redeem my my silver play button. Well, I never got the code. So, I was a good little boy. I didn't have any strikes on my channel. I didn't have any strikes on my channel. It said clearly in the guidelines that if you have strikes on your channel at the time that you pass 100,000 subscribers, you will not be eligible for the silver play button. 
Well, I didn't have any strikes on my channel. My channel was clean. I had strikes on my channel uh, which I felt were not warranted. There was only one strike on my channel that I felt was warranted, but it wasn't warranted the way it wasn't. I shouldn't have been punished for it for what they said that it was. Uh, I made a derogatory gesture, gesture with my hand, and I cursed at YouTube. And they actually removed the video and said that it was hate speech against others. It wasn't hate speech. It was. It was. It was. Uh, it was displeasure in the way that I was being treated on YouTube. Uh, a few years back, well, it's been a couple of years now, we had this thing called Adpocalypse, where we would put a video up, and if there was a, a word that their algorithm picked up as, you know, off-color or off-key, that they would demonetize your video, and then you had to, you had to go ahead and uh, request a review of the said video. And, you know, and that's that, right? It's, it's all good, right? Well, is there somebody in there? No. Uh, so, uh, it really pissed me off that every single day, every freaking day, every video that I put up for, for weeks, literally weeks, months, I would get demonetized. And I could not just do the re-monetization or the review for my telephone. So, I had to either go home or I had to get uh, Teresa, if she was home, if she was home, to go ahead and uh, re, re uh, you know, send a review. You know, send it in for review. Well, it was a displeasing video, or it was a displeasing uh, uh, process, and it annoyed the hell out of me. And when I say annoyed the hell out of me, I was just absolutely frustrated. And I made that video with my middle finger and saying, you know, F you YouTube. And that is the only strike that I had against my channel that was really warranted. Uh, I guess, I mean, the whole part of YouTube, point of YouTube was, it was you expressing yourself. It was you, or I, me, you too. So, because they used to call a TV a boob tube, or the tube, and it's not that anymore, but anyways, once Gurgle got a hold of it, they ruined it. They really did. They started, it became a left-wing agenda. I mean, when I can see girls in thong bikinis bumping their ass up and down, they call it twerking or whatever, which, you know, I'm guilty of looking at that, you know. Uh, but they don't, they don't get flagged because it's, you know, it's acceptable. And there's ads on that, but then you get this, you know, like Timothy, my son, Timothy, he's working in the shop and his ass crack shows. I got flagged for sexual content for that. And I, and I was in jail, YouTube jail for 90 days. It's three months. You know, three months I had to be, and I could have gotten, I could have gotten my channel taken away over that. And it wasn't even, it wasn't anything. It was his ass crack. It wasn't that I had, you know, hey, look at this, I'd like to tap that, you know, Not, nothing like that. But it's just very unfair, you know. So anyways, I, I think that's why I'm not getting my silver play button, but that's okay. You know what? Because I have a mouth and I have an opinion, and I guess my mouth and my opinion uh, don't match that uh, of Google's or Gurgle's uh, opinions and uh, their political views and even their way they live their life. They just don't like my lifestyle, and that's okay. So in protest, if you're going to protest, you have to uh, be willing to face the consequences of your protests. And that's the end of that. So Joe's walking up here. I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more.